Mm. Arguably a spotter. Cameraman another time. You were a key grip at one time. <laughs> Sweet baby Jesus. I heard, I, I heard the pig got away. Oh, this is a different pig. That's that? Oh, oh, oh. Great <laughs> right, it looks like we've got everybody assembled so we can get started. Holy crap. Um, I'll just briefly recap what happened last game and then uh, we'll go into uh, this game. So uh, you spent a good deal of time at the King's Rest, uh, still uh, sort of absorbing the information regarding uh, Capitan de la Muerte and his search, as well as uh, the business place of Adlet Lockwin, the uh, Rose's Thorn, which is the inn that's associated with uh, the, um, the business, and also his uh, private residence. Um, you did a little bit more digging around the area, and you also went to track down uh, Raul Rodrigo's uh, troubadour, um, the one that sort of acted as a major domo for him at one point, but you've seen him around town. Uh, he introduced himself as Grayscale and, uh, you know, passed some information back and forth to you with regards to Adlat and just reconfirming that he likely is the one that has the, uh, the daggers or at least engineered the stealing of them. Uh, you also went and met with Carmen at one point just to, again, pass information back and forth with her. Um, and sort of uh, reconfirm that. Uh, in the uh, process, um, and again, uh, you, you've uh, looked at several different options to uh, possibly uh, get the daggers from Adlat, either, uh, and, and I think everyone was discouraged with regards to the idea of any sort of frontal and or stealth assault, but uh, the option was on the table or uh, possibly uh, trying to convince one of his minions to uh, get the blades out for you in some capacity. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything else on that point. Uh, also, uh, there was some information passed to you by Gabriel Torres, uh, your companion, who, um, because the uh, VRA are going to be arriving in town for the funeral in about 48 hours time, uh, he uh, first passed information to you about uh, Esteban Rodrigo, one of the Vire that just arrived in town. Um, and uh, Esteban is the younger brother of Mateo Rodrigo. Uh, he should be in your uh, journals at this point. Um, and uh, he's just known for, you know, having a, a bit of a issue with the Kingsland's, uh, you know, uh, ruling of the Sunkissed Isles. Um, but, uh, you know, he hasn't been in open conflict with the Kingsland. It was their brother uh, that uh, actually attempted uh, open armed uh, rebellion against them, and he was killed for it. Um, in his place uh, was put uh, Mateo Rodrigo's younger son, uh, or one of his younger sons, I should say. He's got many. Um, and after Sabian Rodrigo was executed for fostering rebellion, uh, Elazar Rodrigo, who uh, ha apparently has a, a heavy loyalty to the Kingsland, um, having uh, studied at the College of the War Wizards in the Kingsland and part of their military, um, he, uh, he was uh, forcibly placed in the uh, title uh, role of Viceroy, which is the same as Vire, it's just the Kingsland way of saying it. So, um, But uh, you were told by uh, the proprietor of the King's Rest that he may need to uh, repurpose one of the rooms that he's loaning to you all in the event that the Viceroy wants to stay there. So, Anything else I miss or uh, anything else anyone had to add to that? Okie doke. Well, um, we'll uh, cut back to it's the, the morning uh, 48 hours before the funeral, and you guys have been conducting your investigation. Um, I'm going to uh, bring us over to the King's Rest, because that's where you would be uh, starting your uh, your next day. Um, and uh, you're all in uh, the common room 
uh, with uh, Gabriel, uh, who is, you know, again, just sort of uh, having some uh, morning coffee with uh, the rest of you uh, being provided by the innkeeper. I think that's Pete's daughters. Now, I thought there was also an idea for the um Wasn't it confirmed by uh, said grayscale that uh, that if Adlai did take them, that he would have them in a not quite a place of prominence to out in the open, but definitely a place where he could admire them because you know he got one over from a friend. You know, yeah. Kate, I, I uh, sorry, you know, Virgil, I, I sorry. Okay. Um, at, at at first, I, I assumed you were just saying this as a ploy, like as a shell game. You know, we. We offer our services, and you know we use it as a psych. Ah, we know you have it now. Here we go. But maybe there is something about your idea. If we, oh yeah, yeah. I was just trying to sneak him out. We can always go back towards confirmation. But interesting. I I'm intrigued by your idea. So it's it's like like it sounds like double throwing ideas out. Wait, no double agents. No, I just thought um, I just no. we, we could work for the guy. Actual agents. I I, th I thought he meant double agents to start, but maybe there's some genius in the. Oh, I didn't even think we could be double agents. Oh, so that's genius. So ideas, ideas out. Um, we know that the the only person that we know that has access to um the offices is the bookie. Right? At least the only one we've interacted with. Oh, yeah, yes. definitely. It definitely has access to the What if we could somehow either find or create some sort of blackmail that would make him just get them for us, or at least tell us where they are? Where he's worried about losing his job if we tell his boss what we know. Or worse. Right. 
we already let he already let them he already let slip that you know he saw drawings of his dad, which he probably a wasn't supposed to see, and certainly wasn't supposed to mention. Well, um, I know we're going to use him. They're talking about trying to use him somehow. I mean, I'm not opposed to him trying to coerce him into doing it, mainly because he can't get the. I don't think he has enough money amongst those drivers to risk, you know. Right. That's why I was suggesting blackmail because blackmail doesn't require coin on our side. It just yeah. requires putting him in a situation that is compromising. Also, the situation where he may want to risk doing it is he may not really take any bribe because he's going to be costing his neck to do so. Right, but we know that he drinks to excess fairly regularly. So, you know, it would be easy enough to convince him that maybe he did something that he doesn't remember and that uh, if word got out what he did, his job and or his life might be, you know, um, in jeopardy. While I find the nature of blackmail distasteful, I can't fault the logic. I like both ideas, but... Just throwing it out there as an option. Virgil's idea is much more direct. Yes, but look at the value of the tag team. How right. long do you think he can work that off? One good job. Job that would equate to those daggers, I don't know if he's going to take. Right. You don't know what it'll take. So what's the harm in asking? Also, now well, he knows that we know. That's know another danger, too, because it might be easier to just eliminate us. Right, and we know that he knows that we know. Exactly. I, and if, what, if I, it's I, just going to eliminate us, how would blackmail change that scenario? I think Virgil has brought forward probably well, the simple. best idea it, we have yet. It's simple. Blackmail is very simple. He doesn't know about it. The only one that knows about the blackmail is Booker. But what if he didn't know that we knew? That he knew. That they knew. Right. I mean, we still have the bookkeeper I, to fall back I, on. I'll go along with whatever the most of you feel like. I'll go along with the majority. I just think that from the standpoint of our own necks, working with one individual who has the vested interest not to tell anybody about us is a little safer than going to the person who stole the daggers and saying, hey, we know you got them. What would it take for us to do for you that you would do? Right. Well, are you going to finish that bacon? Because blackmail is always safer. With bacon. Not always safer, but at least there's less people involved that are directly engaged with what's going on. Yes, I, I, your logic, it, it totally baffles me. Because anyone we involve in blackmail means that we're going down the path of blackmailing. Everyone involved, there will be far more people involved, and I guarantee you that there is that one involved. Literally. How would, why would we why would we need anyone else? I mean, you tell him, you're going to tell your 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 master that if you don't get these daggers, we're going to get you in the whole world of hurt. And so then he tells his master he gets the daggers, or he does something we don't expect. Right. Or the opposite idea is we walk up to his master and say, Hi, we want to do something with those daggers that we know you stole from a Rodrigo. Sure. Yeah. I like I, the approach that we're going to be working for him, and uh, that way it's just an exchange of services. Uh, if you want to do it, just be prepared that we have to put large, large bullseyes on all of you. Sure. And Enough talk. If we blackmail Let's someone work. and are known to be the blackmailers, we would be putting large, oh, big no, symbols no. on us. No, that... not at all. Not at all. Not at all, because we're going to be just... The bookkeeper doesn't have that wherewithal or the spine to come after us. Uh, I don't see how you can jump to that conclusion so easily, my friend. Uh, I, I tell you what, I worry about him a hell of a lot less than I worry about Adlin finding him, knowing definitively that we know he has the bag. Brother Sharon, what would you tell uh, you? Grail's breakfast, he's just going to start heading toward the door. Yep. Brother Sharon, what would you tell the accountant? Because if it is, if you're telling him that his master is pissed at him, 
Wouldn't he just then go to no, Adlat and no, apologize? No, no. He would say, you gave us information on something that your master would find very expensive and you would be very sick in trouble. We will not give out that information. We will not tell you that you did this thing if you get us the daggers. That's the whole purpose of a blackmail that works. You don't tell a lot of people. You don't broadcast it. You tell the individual you're dealing with what's going to happen if we tell everybody what you did. If he doesn't, we keep our secret, he gets the daggers, we're happy, we're done. Well, I have to say that I, I much more appreciate the direct approach, because if it gets violent, then, you know, we made our bed, we'll lie in it, and I'm prepared for that. Uh, the blackmail thing just doesn't seem to work for me. And if he wishes to do that, I will go along with it with him. I'm fine with whatever. I was just throwing out another option. Where's the damn exit? Who, who's going to... Kane, Kane, deep press the thing with the handle on it is the door. So, so, so okay. Rachel, you were saying uh, your, your plan was, uh, tell me more of your plan. <laughs> I was thinking we would walk up to this ad latch fellow and, and tell him we want the daggers and that we were willing to work for them. That's, that's, that's literally the, the most simple plan. I don't are know. we going to go en masse, or are we sending a representative? I'm not taking uh, them to kill, of course. Okay. Again, I, I'm just trying to work out the details. Okay. So then, if that is the plan, then why not just ask him what he wants for them? Tell him that we have an interested buyer. Yeah. Wow. Well, huh. And so whether yeah. it be our services, or an amount of money, or... Who knows what he may want, but at that point we will have confirmed that he has them, assuming that he gives us the price and doesn't tell us that he doesn't have them. Okay, now I, I suggest that one of us speak for all and the rest of us be quiet during that discussion because I think it looks more unified if we all stand there instead of a bunch of people talking at once. And that's Great. a complicated thing. So we need to pick someone to be the spokesman. Sounds like Kane knows the plan. Well, we should have him do it. I was going to say you go. But also, I was thinking of telling this Adlai fellow that we work for the Rodrigo. I mean, why not? What's that going to do? We want to get the we want to get the daggers. We're willing to work, and we we're going to hand them to him. Well, I don't know if I'd mention Rodrigo because that could really go afoul of the situation. That he could see that as a way to press advantage on the situation even further. Also, did say that he wants to keep this low key and his name out of it. Right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. Let's not put the banner up again. I always just feel weird about lying. You don't have to lie. Tell them that we have an interested party that wants the daggers that we are certain he has taken. What if he well, asks We don't even to have the proof of stealing that he's in possession of. And for someone who's not interested in lying, you can totally give him the most devious of schemes that we've talked about so far. <laughs> Say blackmail is the most nefarious. But it's not nefarious, but it's persuasive. You and I clearly have a different definition of those words. You've never had to try to get a congregation to you in a temple. I mean, I've congregated with many people. Hey, oh, I hear that. <laughs> to stay, to stay away from the pig tribes. But yeah, I would just be as honest as straightforward as possible. We have, you know, an individual that is interested in acquiring the daggers that we have gained knowledge that he possesses. Sure. If he asks who, I'm going to say that Mr. Rodrigo. No, say that information is not available. But it is available. No. no. Virtual a middleman who never gives out who your actual customer is, because why would you need the middleman? Right. And in many, and in many ways, that, that would weaken our case. Likely, if we go in there looking like buffoons, it, we may find it impossible. I think your plan of just simply going in and seeing if they're purchasable, whether by money or service, is great. Uh, especially because we can play it any other way we want in the heat of the moment. Right. I'm just saying that if he asks who, you say that, you know, the buyer well, wishes to remain anonymous. Yeah. Well, we don't even need to go with that. No, no, no. We already made this mistake once. We don't make this mistake again. We don't need to 
anything. That's just way what the price. No, I'm what I am saying is that if he asks who wants that, we don't say Rodrigo. We say Great. you know, the person wishes to remain anonymous. I, I, Which again I is not a lie. I just don't think I should lie. talk back. I'd say in that case, if uh, they're asking the question of probate court, say, well, then it's, uh, that's not the – that information is not on the table. Again, what's the price? Ooh, that's, 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 that's taking back the power. It's just simply using our wits in conversation. That's it. And if things go run afoul, my blade is ready to go. Yeah, I, I, I think we can all agree that we want to avoid conflict if we can. Oh, yeah, of course. But prepare for the worst. Yes, I'd much rather empty his coffers uh, <laughs> when possible. But, uh, you know, if, it, if he needs to be dispatched, then that's so be it. But let's see if we can get him to hire us to uh, do something to uh, get these blades purchased off. Do something. Do something, yes. I'm literally by the door. Uh, Kane comes walking upstairs. Uh. Uh, there was a heated conversation below. I think the Margrave is here. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's the Margrave. Well, that's better than the Captain. The Margrave or the Weissner? Uh, uh, David called him the Margrave. Okay, so that's the case. Yes. Come on, Sam. Conversation seems to be between them. Between whom? The Margrave and David. Okay, <laughs> that's the key. Not violent, but, you know, tense. Am I uh, misrepresenting that, Pete, or is that somewhat accurate? Um, everything that I wrote, of everything that I wrote to you is everything that you know, and however you convey that is how you convey that. We should possibly see if there's anything we can do to assist our host here. He's been quite kind to us, and if there's a bit of pressure on him, maybe we can help alleviate it. Yep. Uh, I offered to uh, assist him, and the Margrave didn't seem happy with the intrusion, so it might be best if we give him some space for now. Well, sure. They left the common room to have a private conversation. know what they're speaking of, but uh, you didn't see my well, danger. Let's see what uh, what I might be able to listen to here. I will uh, I will stealthily go to uh, near where the rooms were uh, that they were heading towards. Okay. Uh, they're in the, dis the distillery. Okay. I will try to sneak my way there as quietly as possible. You can go ahead and roll a stealth check. I will try to distill myself. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to become spirits. <laughs> um, here we go. Careful, the guards are rash. Okay. Now you see him quietly begin to move downstairs. And uh, Mike, I'm going to bring your token down there, but I'm going to, rather than uh, slash whisper it to you, I'll describe it to everyone again, sort of like what happened last time. Yeah, I'm going to give all the information to everybody. My character is definitely a sharing individual when it comes to information. Now, coin, oh, that's a whole other issue. I'll put you down here, and Mike will have you roll up a new character. So, uh, 
what you run into uh, is is that the only individual uh, that is in the inn currently uh, is the uh, scribe that you've seen here you know multiple times throughout your uh, various different stays and such and uh, they are you know sort of seated and still working on whatever they've been working on uh, you can see that they're drinking coffee while they're uh, doing it uh, and they s sort of um, you know, uh, are eyeing across at them. You can see uh, as you poke your head around the corner, uh, and by the way, like, as you poke your head around the corner, you're stealth down here, but it's open ground between you and everything that you see here, so it would be next to impossible to, you know, try to, you know, maneuver, you know, so that you couldn't be seen through here unless you did some sort of distraction or something like that. But you see two guards... Uh, they're dressed in half plate, and uh, they have a livery that looks sim similar to some of the King's Landian uh, livery that you've seen about town or on other individuals. Uh, they are back to back, or not back to back, but side to side, I should say, and they are right there. Uh, and um, the distillery, you know, is past them. Uh, of course, there is another way into the distillery, you think, uh, through the kitchen, which is through the door in the north. Um, but uh, you can uh, hear the, you know, crashing of pots and pans and the working, you know, going on in the kitchen. Uh, you think you hear Mrs. Novit in there. Yeah, I'll go by the guys. I come down the thing, I go over to the table and clear off some of the dishes that are on the table. Okay. And uh, I'll work my way over to the kitchen. Alrighty. With the dishes to just literally carry the dishes into the kitchen like it was my job. All right. And, uh, I've opened up the door into the kitchen, so you should be able to see and go through it. Uh, that 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 is the stove that you're going through. Uh, you can just see through the other side on that. Uh, the... <laughs> okay, so I, I, I come into the room. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, uh, well, I have, have these dishes for you, madam. Uh, where would you like them to be put? I just put them on the block here. I'll see to them. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, okay. As you get over there, she's like, no, 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 on the, on the block. Uh, I wouldn't go back there right now. Oh, I'm, I'm totally sorry. You know, I was, while I'm here, I was wondering if, well, I, I hate to say this, but I seem to have left my, my pouch, and I think I may have left it out in, in the uh, distillery here. Uh, would, you, would you mind if I just went for a moment to retrieve it? I know it's embarrassing. I, I'm leaving my things about, and I'll try to persuade her. Uh, sure, you can go ahead and roll persuasion. Um, by the way, Mrs. Novit was, uh, when you got in there, she was chopping vegetables in front of her. Uh, let's see, 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 Yes, I appreciate that, but it's, you know, quiet. You know, so the others don't poke fun and whatnot. And I will use a friggin' point. All right. <laughs> no problem. Use a hero point. You can go ahead and put right. that on the map, and I will... Get an award at the end of the campaign for most points used. That's my goal, really. You're going to have to fight me for that one. Okay. <laughs> 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 you don't get to keep the point, so you might as well use it. Alright, here we go. Let's try again. Okay, that's better. She says, well, I certainly will allow you to go back there, but not now. Uh, now would be bad. Um, odd, uh, you know, just the way that she says bad, and, I mean, it's not like she's brandishing the knife, but, like, there's some, like, underlying... I, it's, it's difficult to say, but, um, okay. you know, there's you are, uh, you know, a professional in some ways, and um, the way that she just turns the blade from, like, a chopping motion in her hand to, like, she she looks like almost like someone that's skilled with a knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, her grip changes. Yes. Uh, so, Pete, the Margrave and the Viceroy should be loosely on the same team-ish, right? You are correct. They would both be on the side of Team Kingsland, uh, more or less, uh, the Margrave being the the crown's appointed representative in the Isles, and the Viceroy being one of the Virae, 
uh, although ordinarily the Virae are disposed to not like the Kingsland, but the Viceroy is the, probably one of the sole of Virae that Gabriel has told you about that is Team Kingsland because he went to the War Wizards College in the Kingsland. And, uh, you know, for Rodrigo seems to be really, really into uh, just being positive towards the crown. So and it's the Viceroy that likes to Uh, you are correct, is is that uh, Mr. Novit said uh, during last game uh, that he may need to uh, clear out a room for the Viceroy, as the Viceroy likes to stay here occasionally uh, when he comes through town, uh, largely because it reminds him of the Kingsland. Uh, it tends to be that those that um, are from the Kingsland or favor the Kingsland or are used to the Kingsland like this place, um, and what you've gathered from that is is that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Novit tend to cook in the style of the Kingsland. Uh, they tend to the, their decor is more of of that country, and and uh, of course they they don't uh, constantly speak in Castellanos, nor do they. It doesn't seem like they have a heavy Castellanos um, patronage at their establishment. Okay. Excellent. Just wanted to point that out to the groups so that we know uh, like oh. the timeliness of the Margaret's visit right before the Viceroy's. A hundred percent. Yes, absolutely. All right. All right. So as I'm over here, I'm just going to say, oh, certainly. Oh, and you know, I'm not feeling it. I need to sit down. And there's a little stool that's next to the door. I'll just sit down there and um, to keep engaging in conversation with her. As, I as you go to sit down, very, she comes over and she says, no, dear, no, here, let me help you into the other room and I can get you a nice cup of tea. Uh, when she goes, she goes to place a back uh, like a hand on your back, by the way, as if to just gently nurture you aside, but the hand that she puts on your back is the one with the blade. Okay. And she's not. she doesn't seem to be overtly threatening, but, again, the way that she, she yes. postures and such. Yeah, I get it. What I was trying to do was hang by the door as long as I could to see how much I could hear. She knows, like, I know, but I'm, I'm going to do my perception check now that I've been there for, like, 30 seconds. So let's see if I heard anything. You did hear something, and I will whisper that to you. Okay, and I will make my way out. I thank her very much for her help. Oh, the two of you are the consummate hosts. I appreciate that, and I hope that the, the, the dishes were well placed. They were quite nice. And I worked my way back out. And I know we know it's bad if you just see Mike's character. Uh, and after you uh, you leave the kitchen, uh, she goes. Uh, I'll prep that tea on the on the kettle right now. Um, and she uh, goes back into the kitchen. She closes the door, and you can hear the door to the kitchen lock behind you. And I'll I'll bring you back upstairs. One moment. Uh, you're gonna have to scroll down. Yep. What I was able to hear is that the security here is shockingly lacking, and that the Margrave is not going to recommend the Viceroy stay here. So, I don't know if maybe we can show as the security presence for here and possibly satisfy that. Uh, maybe some, maybe one of you, like uh, one of our larger contingent, uh, goes up at the right time with the Margrave there with. Uh, the innkeeper and uh, presents ourselves as security for him. Maybe that would be sufficient. Like I, don't think, guards. I don't think in any immediate moment that that would change his mind, but maybe working with, with we could hatch a plan. It's information that's possibly something we could act upon. I would not recommend doing anything hastily, at least now. Yeah, that's the best that I could get, but I will say this. Uh, that's quite a lot, my friend. That's fine. The, the innkeeper's wife is skilled with blade. And she might be scared to get out. And yes, but she had that blade on my shoulder 
ever so close to my skin. Were she not skilled, she surely would have accidentally cut it. Uh, what type of person is skilled? Insane plants and the blade. <laughs> yes. These talents. Yes, I think that she may have another uh, enterprise afoot than uh, than hospitality. <laughs> Lucky you got out of there with your bacon. <laughs> yes. I think if I had stayed there a moment longer, uh, we may not have, well, I may not have come back with anything. <laughs> at all. Well, oh, we're excited to have you back. <laughs> Shall we go? Okay, I will change the map and uh, get you guys set up. Mm -hmm. Can I roll a perception just to see if he, you know, generally appreciated the gesture, um, or if he was more annoyed? Sure. Uh, I'm trying to find my roll machine. No worries. I'm trying to find the end of this Oreo. Yes. Uh, difficult to say. Um, the only thing that you noticed was that the innkeeper was nervous. The other, other than that, it was difficult to tell any of his mood or inclination towards you or anything of that. And he got increasingly nervous um, when you came over and interrupted the conversation. Right. right. So what I'm going to do on the next map... Uh, you guys have been across this map already, uh, so I'm not going to have you start on an edge or anything of that sort. But what I am going to do is start you in front of the business of Adlet Lockwin. Um, and then uh, it's towards the middle of the map, so you will have to find your tokens. Um, but that said, let me swap over vision and let me find it myself with the camera. And... So after some adjustment, if you cannot see, just let me know and I will adjust your site settings. But uh, I've also, and feel free to move yourselves around if there's going to be a different order that you'd like to be approaching in or anything of that sort. You guys would have had you know, 15 to 20 minutes to get here across town. Um, so you'd be approaching in the manner that you wish to. But, um... Uh, which ones? Like, I can't recall. Is that right? So, uh, the business is right here with the okay, guards yeah. in front of it. Okay. And so down that path uh, is double doors that open up to his business. You can see there's a couple windows around. Over to the building towards your right over here is the inn, which is the um, uh, the Rose's Thorn, which is uh, the inn that you ran into Capitan de la Muerta. You approached originally from the south, if you recall, and there's a fortified building that looks like it's dedicated towards the King's Lynn, and then there's this sort of shrine-like area and a little bit of an open marketplace uh, that um, Virgil had bought some alchemical ingredients from. Uh, I hope that I have it set, and it looks like it's set that way, so that once you've been through an area, the fog of war will make it so that you can continue to uh, see that area at least, or at least the outline of it. Um, but that said... Uh, oh, yeah. 
hard on a 2D plane to interpret one hundred percent. So, uh, but the business uh, from where I put sh put your tokens is directly to the north and down that path. Let's see here. Let me move. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks like before you can even get to the door of the business, there are guards uh, set there, and the guards have a dog with them. Very fond of dogs. <laughs> as we're uh, heading toward Adlax, uh, Kane will try to walk as closely as possible to Virgil and just have a, a semi-private conversation with him. Okay, that's no problem. You can uh, have done that on the way here. Okay, you guys can have had a conversation on the way here. Sure, go ahead.
Alright. Made it to the uh, the point of business. Alright. The guards uh, do not try to stop anyone from moving forward through there. Um, you know, as as Kane is the first uh, token that's been moved through there, um, he uh, moves up, and uh, whereas they were front facing, they do turn side facing as he walks through. Um, they're a little bit creepy again because they're wearing those uh, plate masks that uh, most of the guards for Lockwin wear. But uh, that said, there's also a mercenary that's a little bit further down the path that um, does not have a mask on. But um, that being said, the uh, trail here ends in double doors right up here. Uh, yes, they're flat mass featureless, except they have a slit for the eyes. Uh, not quite, because they don't have any facial features built into the mask or anything of that sort. Uh, and it's not, it doesn't look, it may defend the face, but uh, it's pretty thin uh, looking, so um, it likely would be more intent to bend or, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, if it was hit solidly, it probably wouldn't uh, protect too much. I mean, maybe versus, like, you know, s s stuff being thrown in the face, perhaps, or anything like that. But uh, it looks like it's more of a, you know, just superficial thing that they have on. Your tactic. <laughs> yes, intimidation. How's the dog react when they move past? Uh, the dog, uh, as you were, were approaching, uh, it was seated, and it sort of gets up on all fours. Um, you can see that the guard next to him holds up a hand, and the dog sits back down. What kind of dog is that? Um, nature. That's a weird-looking dog. You're not so sure. You're not really skilled with regards to dog breeds or anything of that sort. Uh, it looks it looks like a mongrel of sorts, and it does have you know it's it's fairly like muscular, and it comes up to about waist on your normal size companions, probably more like your thigh. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty big dog. Fur teeth tail. So, moving further along the path, you guys can move all the way up to the door if you'd like. I'm sorry. Break your heart? Nope. Take some, you know, probably as I was looking all over the place to make sure I didn't miss any. Marveling at yourself? I want to cane lead because I want to, uh, give the uh, perception of him being the muscle, you know, and being the, the guard. Uh, like I said, I'll take the moment before walking in, I had to double check all my spells and abilities, but you know what I mean, I'll, uh, I'll kind of clean myself up a bit, uh, present my uh, orkly traits as well, though. Okay. Give myself a bit more of an edge. Was Garcia the bookkeeper? Uh, yes, as you open up the, the door, uh, and it's double door, so it just sort of opens up on both sides, you can see that immediately uh, in the opening of the business uh, is Luis Garcia, uh, who was the gentleman that you were drinking with the other night. It looks like he's pouring over some uh, ledgers on a desk, um, and you know there's multiple desks in this room, there's books, ledgers almost all over the place, um, and uh, he uh, looks up... Uh, at first, uh, like he looks like he's either 
I, it, just the normal look of someone not stupefied, but going over, you know, monotonous uh, work. Um, and like any, you know, f folks that might be, you know, working in various different bookkeeping jobs. And uh, he looks up and at first uh, he seems to like have no expression, but then it slowly turns to a smile as he says, Oh, my friends, it is so good to, uh, to see you all. Come in, uh, come in. Uh, uh, what is it that uh, we can do for you today? Senor Garcia, the time has come. We, uh, we must have a meeting with your boss. Uh, a, a, a meeting with, with Mr. Lockwin? Yes, we have a proposal. We think he'd be most interested in it. Uh, uh, well, Mr. Lockwin is extraordinarily busy. Are you, are you sure that this is a proposal that he would want to have his attention? I mean, he could always put it into writing and I could I give it to Mr. Lockwin. That would be acceptable. He's not the types of things one simply puts in a letter. Uh, and what skills are you guys using to try to convince him? Because he doesn't seem to be like he seemed to. He, he, okay, that works. Works out well. Um, well, here, and uh, he nervously uh, sort of moves over uh, to uh, a doorway over here, and then he will open that up. Um, let me see here. Here we go. Uh, please, if you all would be so kind as a guard sort of moves to the side. Um, and go into the uh, the waiting room. Uh, I will uh, go speak to Mr. Lockwin, and um, I, I will uh, have him come in momentarily. Um, it uh, the, the, please help yourself to any of the refreshments uh, laid out. Um, Uh, he he points to through that doorway there. So yes. Well, no problem. And uh, Luis will go, and uh, he goes to speak to uh, Adlet. Can we see these guards on the other side of these windows here? Yes. Yeah. Please goes. I will move Gabriel into the room as well. I look around the room. Is there anything interesting in the room here? A little quick perception check to see what's going on. Let them have a good look. Um. So, uh, looking around the room, uh, he has. Uh, there are multiple bowls of uh, appears to be candy uh, laid out on the table. Uh, most of it chocolate, although uh, some of it is 
uh, hard candy, just, um, you know, some of it almost like rock candy or crystallized sugar or things of that sort. Um, there is a large uh, pitcher of water uh, and uh, several glasses laid out on the table. And off to the side, uh, one of these tables does have a basin of water uh, as well as uh, sort of a hand towel and a mirror to the side of it. Um, in addition to that, um, there's a couple of like on top of the um, the tables to to the uh, eastern side there. Um, you can see that th there's just uh, little books uh, lined up with little uh, like ornate figurines that are are holding the the books upright on the uh, the shelves um various different titles that are, are laid out there um almost for decoration of sorts uh there's also some small statuary on those tables as well um but uh and then there's a uh, plant in the room as well uh but there doesn't appear to be anything uh too too terribly valuable that you can see like some of the statuary might you know, fetch some coin, but um, you don't think that any of it's like uh, a rare find or anything of that nature. Okay, there's only one more, one more thing I'd like to do is um, I'd like to take a look around the room quickly to see if I can see any like keyholes or, you know, cracks, crevices that someone could be watching or listening through specifically. Okay. Uh, so you guys be searching for that. Would, the, would that be perception or something else? Well, would that that perception would work? Yes. Um, no, you don't see any uh, listening holes. Although um, the walls are paneled, uh, and to the very south, uh, you see what could feasibly be a sliding panel of sorts like if you put pressure on it it might uh fold back and open up to the next room but um you know you're just it it you would have to test it to know 100 percent for sure um but just at a glance it looks like that the, that the uh south panel that you're uh sort of right next to actually uh is a sliding panel of sorts Uh, yeah, that would be thievery. Certainly, you can go ahead and roll thievery. Um, you, uh, you manage to press it enough, you don't, there's no trap or anything like that, and, um, you think if you push back further, uh, it's going to open up. Alrighty, uh, let me see here. So... And the, the visual there is that Virgil and Sarah are kind of locking angles so that, you know, they can, they can see that I'm standing on a chair pouring my spire a couple of glasses of water and just like block line of sight. Co gives Garashi this withering glance. Virgil's holding a pitcher of water, but I'm helping. <laughs> Let me see where reveal. Could you use those to block those windows? Uh, possibly, yes. Uh, here, what I'm going to do, Mike, is uh, you all see this uh, panel open, and it uh, opens up uh, to the warehouse on the other side. I'm just going to, because it not it doesn't open like fully so that everyone in the room can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Mike through the wall a little bit, um, just so that the dynamic lighting stays intact. Uh, but let me get to the proper layer. Um, you go through, or you open it up the other side, and uh, let's see here. And you can see that there is a warehouse on the other side. And uh, let me see, I'm going to have Gabriel go through as well. Yeah, I don't see anything. Uh, scroll down a bit because you should not see. One second. 
Oh, wow, okay. I don't know why you don't have visible. Oh, lighting, yeah, that's why, is, is that uh, lighting sources are on the other side. So one second, let me give you some light because the room would have that. I mean, I totally get it. Oh, shit. Uh, and uh, the laborer and the guard uh, sort of look up at you. And uh, I, I fall. Like, I tumble through the thing accidentally, and I tried to, uh, to pull it off, so I just, I, I fell through a panel. Uh, so deception? Uh, with... Oh, God! What the... The devil... I... Oh. Uh, when, you come, okay. when you come through, this guard says, Sir, here, let me help you, as he begins to help you up. Um, please don't play around with things in the meeting room. Charlie, sorry, my apologies. I... Yes, thank you for helping me up. I appreciate that. All right. Oh, careful over there, gentlemen. There's a... I fell through something. So, um... Is, is Grail staying in the vestibule of the uh, building, or is he going to go into the meeting room with the rest of the group? I thought this was one overlook to the wall there. Uh, I'll move you into the meeting room. Second. No worries. Um, so all that said, you guys get yourself situated in here. Uh, and about five to ten minutes goes by. Uh, of course, uh, Arashi has, you know, done what he's done. Is there anything else that anyone else wants to do? I've got enough damage so far. Fair. Um, eventually, uh, coming into the room, uh, Kane, uh, you uh, come face to face with uh, Ciro. Uh, which you know is uh, Lockwin's bodyguard, and uh, Ciro uh, sort of, s s s you know, he stares at you, although you don't necessarily, you can only see some of the points of his eyes coming through his mask, uh, and uh, he says, excuse me, sir, please make room yeah, for Miss... out a hand to uh, shake his hand, and uh, salute. Um, he goes to slake, uh, not slake, but shake your hand as well uh, with his uh, leather gauntleted hand. Kane uh, shakes his hand, you know, uh, cordially, and then uh, steps aside to let him enter. Uh, with the, uh, with the distractions. To, uh, I'll see if I can get a, uh, a, a small No problem. Yeah, I didn't expect that much to pop out. Okay. So you cast infectious enthusiasm? Yep, just so that Okay, no problem. Uh, when uh, Kane says you step to the side, um, Ciro motions for you to take a seat at the table so that he can step through. Ciro uh, steps in and stares at Virgil and uh, says blankly, you're sitting in Mr. Lockwin's seat. Oh my gracious, I am so sorry. I, I, I did not mean any sort of way. I just apologize. It's been 20 feet. I should go sit next to him now. 
Lockwin sort of moves his way into the room. Uh, Sira moves out of his way, and then Sira moves back to stand in the doorway um, and closes the door behind him as uh, Lockwin uh, comes in and sits down. It may be pretentious of me to uh, accord you the moment you walked in, but I'm one as are my uh, teammates quick to get to our point. Well, we're interested in something you have and would like to make something. Lockwin holds up a hand, says, Yes, yes, we'll get to the reason why you're here in a moment. Ciro, if you would, please. Um, and you can see Ciro um, begins to walk past Kane, grab the pitcher of water, pour a glass of water, and bring it over to Adlat. Um, and Adlat, you know, it it almost seems like the, he moves glacially as he goes across. It's very deliberate. Walks over, pours the water. You, it, like ev no one's talking, and you can hear the pouring of the water into the glass as Ciro silently brings it back over to Adlat, and then Adlat sort of uh, some of the water as it dribbles down uh, his uh, goatee a bit, um, and he begins to uh, wipe it away with a handkerchief. Um, and then, uh, he looks, uh, back at Ciro. Thank you, Ciro. Um, as he hands the glass to, back to him. And you can see that Ciro goes to refill it as Adlat goes. Now, uh, what is it that you were saying? I wasn't paying attention. Are you, uh, done? You quenched your thirst? Were you at all? Well, my, my apologies, but, uh, I uh, originally was planning on uh, an early lunch, um, but this was interrupted uh, by my uh, page that uh, had told me you had a most lucrative offer, and so uh, I am a little bit parched, yes. Well, fair. And for the, uh, our audacity, I do apologize, but sometimes it takes uh, a serious effort well, I guess. Well, uh, he looks to Ciro. He says, that's certainly something that we can accommodate for you. Do you have an entire company that you're looking to outfit? Or uh, perhaps uh, this is something that's more ceremonial or more decorative? Um, you all, uh, with a, a mercenary outfit that's local, I can't say that I recognize uh, much of your kind, except, uh, well, I recognize some of the sigils on uh, your equipment. started to make our name for ourselves here. I'm not looking for just daggers for a company. I'm looking for two daggers. Two daggers. Well, I mean, there's any number of weaponsmiths all across the, uh, the uh, old city here. You could probably find two daggers anywhere. I mean, uh, if you're not looking for a, a larger order... Well, uh, if it's uh, something in particular that you need commissioned, I mean, typically I tend to handle larger orders, but sometimes things come across my desk um, every once in a while. Uh, Ciro, bring me that other glass. I'm rather s s needing in to uh, slake my parch tongue again here. Yeah. And um, he takes both of his hands, and you can. Is there water? Is there any other water here, like water behind me on the side? Uh, there's one main pitcher in the middle of the table. Uh, there is the chocolates and the candy, but there isn't another pitcher of water in the room now. Oh, I'm totally eating the chocolates. Can I? Can I reach that water? 
Yeah, absolutely. Let me. So, grab the water. Um, and there's, there are other cups too, correct? Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll put a second cup in his cup and sloppily put the water into both. And then put the jug down in front. Ciro uh, produces like a, a little rag off of his belt and uh, from the spillage. He, uh, I don't try to spill it on ad lib, but you, mm -hmm. you get the idea. I, I try to make it look rough, mm -hmm. but just, you know, putting a second one there, dumping, you know, the water between the two of us. He, he rather silently picks up the water, and whereas Adlat's shaking, but he was shaking when he came in the room, like even in his movements and such, Ciro takes two fingers, picks up the glass of water, you know, just sort of wipes the uh, water away from the table and gently places the glass down with almost no sound from what Ciro does. Uh, and then he steps back as Adlat um, says, well, thank you, I appreciate it, as he um, guzzles some more. Well, um, so two in particular, no uh, other likeness of their sort. Well, um, if they've come across my desk, then uh, perhaps I can assist you uh, with it. Um, uh, do you have any idea of uh, their make? Uh, maybe they have a maker's mark, or they have a, perhaps a style that I could recognize them by? I describe uh, two daggers. Yes, quite uh, familiar with them. Um, Ciro and uh, Adlat. Adlat looks back to Ciro, and Ciro uh, just glances down uh, through his mask at Adlat. And Adlat looks at you and says, Hmm, well, I've heard of such ones uh, going about in the aisles, but I have to say that I don't know if they've come across any of my uh, various businesses. I'd have to check in with my scribes in order to see if we've uh, had any come in, uh, perhaps they were acquisitioned, bought, sold, etc. Um, if you're looking for them... I'll stop, I'll interrupt that but while stopping, rolling with the coin. And that's a shame. There's quite a lot of information um, and value that we place on those. Mm. Having a little uh, Treasure in itself. Hmm, too bad. Well, in the event that it is uh, in the possession of one of my businesses, um, I most certainly would be uh, willing to uh, perhaps work with you as far as price or uh, fair trade, uh, depending on circumstance. But again, as I said, um, I don't know everything that goes across uh, the, the tables of my various different uh, businesses and uh, various different uh, individual procuring agents, so uh, you'd have to excuse me. It will take me some time to see if I actually have it. Well, again, not to be disrespectful, but you're a newer mercenary company, it seems, uh, and I still don't necessarily know the color of your coin beyond what you're rolling on the table there. Um, you'll, f <laughs> you'll forgive me uh, if I don't jump, or rather, I don't ask how high when you ask me to jump. Uh, in this particular circumstance. Rather, I would treat you as any other client, which is important, but I do have my own business to conduct here. Hey, Pete, I try to take a look at when he's interacting with, with Co on this, I try to get like an in, insight on him to see if he's reacting to the value of that coin at all, or if he's just seeing us pull the coin off the table. Okay, like, sure. Did he, did he actually react to that? Uh, I don't see something for insight, so would that just be a perception rule? Perception would be applicable, yes. Yeah. 
or 16. And while you send that to our bit, it might be. Yep. Okay. But my, my gruff, green nature sometimes gets the better of me. Maybe I didn't present it properly. We are asking you to help out. Would you like us to help? <laughs> Meaning it the other way around. Well. I work for this stuff. I only work for the successful. I thought I was coming to the right place. Maybe I was wrong. Mm -hmm. So. In kind for you all would be uh, you performing a contract and me fulfilling the contract by uh, procuring you all the daggers. Yes. If that's the nature of it, yes. Hmm. Well, now I think I understand you better. Well, uh, that being said... Uh, you did say how high, and, uh, he, um, he begins, uh, to cough up a little bit, and Ciro provides him, like, another handkerchief that he pulls from his doublet, and, uh, Adlat sort of hawks, uh, something gross and green into the handkerchief. Can I roll a medicine check on that? Uh, <laughs> I don't have any idea what he's like doing this. He's, uh... I was gonna say the exact same thing. I'm trained in medicine. Sure, you guys can roll, roll medicines. <laughs> God damn, we're all doctors here. <laughs> well, now I feel left out. Hold on. Looks like you've got consumption. <laughs> doctor, 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 doctor. Uh, all, all three of you, uh, four of you, uh, do recognize, and uh, consumption is not too far off, as you see that it's not just gross and green, but there's s all five of you recognize that it it is some variation except for Sayer Sayer thinks it might be a hairball but uh, no the rest of you think that he may have some sort of uh, consumption uh, or something along those lines as there was blood in whatever he, he hacked up there it was a majority of gross and green but there was some uh, blood tinged in the handkerchief um, and he Ciro passes it back and puts it back into his doublet I, uh, I break uh, kayfabe for a moment and uh, like I don't lean too far forward but I, I show the holy symbol and offer it is, is there anything we can help with Adlet sort of cocks one eye at you and uh, shifts uncomfortably in his chair and he says, it's being dealt with. I have some of the best, um, well, herbalists and, and apothecaries that money can buy assisting me in uh, my, uh, my uh, illness. But uh, don't worry, it's not contagious, at least not through uh, conventional means. I wasn't worried about it being contagious. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. Uh, so, sorry, sorry for the intrusion. He, Back down. he shakily grabs his glass of water that he hasn't completed yet and uh, drinks some more of it. As uh, he, uh, he says, um, well, uh, it's difficult to know the full measure of a man uh, without... Uh, actually testing your metal um, rather than write up a contract specifically for the daggers uh, that you're looking for provided that my agents have them procured um, perhaps we write up a contract that is a little bit uh, what's the word uh, something that isn't too terribly taxing just asking us your, you're setting for us a favor just so we know whether you have them or not. And of course it would not be a, a favor, mind you. What I would be sending you is a contract to be fulfilled and I would of course pay you for its fulfillment. As you may or may not know, I do not just run weapons and armors, but mercenaries throughout the city. 
and I have several open contracts that uh, I could perhaps go over with Ciro and uh, we could have one delivered uh, to you all and if you found it satisfactory then you uh, take care of the uh, contracted matter and uh, I pay you and then we move forward with our relationship provided of course that I manage to uh, see if the daggers are in our possession in some means or motive. Ciro, your terms are accepted, yes. Good. Well, um, Ciro, um, uh, I don't necessarily think that we need to look over too terribly many. I think from the looks and from the nature of you folks from being out of town, um, I actually was approached very recently, and uh, Ciro walks into the other room. Um, and you can see, uh, or you can hear him uh, talk to Luis, and Ciro says, um, uh, where is uh, the contract that was brought in by Captain Stevenson? Um, and uh, Luis is going, oh, here, here it is, here it is, um, as he hands him uh, some papers, and Ciro comes in and hands them to Adlat. Uh, yes, yes, this came in. Uh, not yet. It's about a quarter there. I mean, like, it could be refilled, but... When, when Ciro walks out, he'll slap one of the papers under the Thank you, my friend. Not spilling any on your friend, that's fine. So, uh, I received a contract, uh, it is, uh, from, uh, a captain, uh, associated with the Margraves men, um, Apparently, they've had an issue out of town that they were looking to be uh, taken care of. Um, problem was that a, a regiment of his men have disappeared, and he doesn't really have the excess men to spare, so he was willing to contract out to, uh, to me uh, to find a mercenary company to take care of it for him. Um, of course, uh, the payment... Uh, was to be a hundred gold. Um, that will be, of course, a hundred gold minus ten uh, percent for my uh, fee for having brought you the contract. So ninety gold to be split amongst your uh, fellowship here. Uh, but um, he passes the contract as well as a couple different maps uh, across to you, um, and uh, absolutely. Um, the uh, maps and the contract uh, detail, uh, like, a, a, and you can see these at a glance, but then Adlat's basically going to summarize it for you. Um, so, uh, when the uh, Kingsland moved in, uh, as they did a, over a generation ago, um, most of the churches of Asmodeus were... Uh, dealt with in some capacity or another, as the Kingsland would deal with uh, heretical faiths within their territory and such. Uh, and there was one such church of Asmodeus outside of Porta del Sol um, of several miles, uh, a bit of a monastery for theirs, uh, for individuals to get away from the city, and well, it might have just been some sort of lodge for rich weirdos back in the day. You know, those followers of Asmodeus get up to um, orgies, ritual sacrifice, whatever it is. So, regardless, uh, the Kingsland dealt with uh, the church some time ago, and it's in ruins. Uh, fast forward to current day, and uh, the issue uh, that we're having there currently is, is that... Uh, several caravans moving in and out of the city to some of the other towns and villages throughout the island have been accosted uh, near that uh, particular monastery uh, and the individuals or the beings that were accosting them 
as he uh, coughs up again, and Ciro provides him another handkerchief. Um, <coughs> uh, but uh, the things attacking them were no longer living, if you catch my meaning. So, uh, the Crown, from what I understand, investigated the matter uh, and tracked uh, much of the movements of these things back towards this monastery. Well, the individuals that went to investigate the monastery never came back. Neither did the next group that was sent there. They suspect some sort of necromancer has shacked up in the monastery, but gods know what could be harbored in the ruins of that uh, temple that was once dedicated to the Prince of Devils. So, uh, the captain uh, has contracted me to get a mercenary company to go up there, find out what's dwelling in those ruins, and dispatch it. Simple enough? Yes. That's something I think we're well equipped to do. Good. You manage to fill this contract. I gain some measure of good faith with the Margrave's men. We all get paid. And you gain some measure of good faith with me. And we can talk about a second contract for these blades, if they are. Purposed. I think we have an accord. Good. Well then, I trust that you all can see yourselves out. Um, but if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please see uh, Lewis at the uh, front desk, uh, and he'll assist you within reason. Um, Ciro also uh, can assist you if you have any uh, further needs or information or act as a go-between uh, with us and the captain. Uh, I myself am a busy man and have things to do, so if you'll excuse me. With that, Ciro uh, sort of moves out of the way of Adlat, and Adlat stands up nods to you all and then leaves the room as Ciro just sort of stands off uh, eerily in the corner staring at you all. I suggest we make haste. Make the most of this day. Yes, as do I. All right. So... Uh, And she headed out of the, uh, uh Ciro and then head out of, uh, I'll get over to, to Co and let him know that, uh, Nero is still in the room. Oh, he's still in the room? Yes. I just worked my way out of the room. Huh? Um, can we hot foot it right to the monastery? I'm going to stop at the refreshment table again. Okay. You can if you'd like to. With his medicine check, uh, would he have any uh, awareness of undead and whether or not he should have, like, a, you know, bludgeoning of um, martial skill that would, like, come up in training? You can go ahead and uh, roll a uh, knowledge religion check. I mean, we are the greatest medical minds in this entire campaign world. Virgil, do you think there's any uh, research that you could on this before... Uh... Uh, Sarah, do you think uh, anyone else, uh, clearly, they're sending mercenaries, maybe others might know about what's going on in this area? Maybe we can ask around a bit about it before uh, we charge off into the lair of a necromancer? Oh, yeah, I mean, he mentioned the prince, he was the, the prince of devils. Yes, Asmodeus. Oh, you guys want to talk about that? Oh, yeah, he mentioned Asmodeus, prince of devils, and... Oh yeah, no, I definitely want to start researching a few things. Certainly have questions around that. 
Um, sure. Oh, and uh, Big Pete, uh, Kyle, you you know obviously that um, it's not like I need to help the group. It's like I was reminded that there's a cool fae, and I need to go look this shit up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and and I would uh, do a little society check on uh, anything, any information that I would you know think worthy of contributing at this point. No problem. You can go ahead and do that. Uh, for the religion checks that are rolled. Uh, you can, uh, know that, uh, you know, like some zombies have, uh, vulnerability to slashing, not all of them, but some, a lot of undead have weakness to positive energy or, you know, healing spells that are going off. Uh, Virgil, you know, knows that, uh, some skeletons, uh, you know, have, uh, resistance to certain types of damage and like bludgeoning tends to be Beth's versus them, uh, although uh, that can vary depending on the, the type of skeleton. Uh, but, um, you know, in general, uh, you know, slashing versus zombies, uh, positive energy versus most types of undead. Some types of undead are not overly affected, more so than other uh, creatures by positive energy, but some of them take extra damage from it. And you know that uh, skeletons typically... Uh, piercing is not what you would want to use because, you know, it just passed through some of the bones some of the time. So uh, you may want to uh, use um, either bludgeoning uh, is best. Uh, slashing can sometimes go through the bones as well, but just depends. I was thinking uh, also along the lines of uh, about what I would know if I spoke with some of these many things. In particular, that his worship was special, but I think it was that we let us know that even though what we might expect, not always the living forward to the undead, we weren't whatever sacrifice or something of that nature, was that just, or just generically they were okay to have all those things? Um, so you all know uh, that um, with Asmodeus, uh, in general, uh, he, he wasn't big on undead per se. Uh, his followers, of course, would utilize them if they, and this will go into the society and the religion checks that everyone rolled. So rather than whisper people individually, you all know versions of this information that, you know, vary depending on your knowledge background. But um, Asmodeus himself uh, believed, or his church generally believes, that the strong rightfully govern the weak, who in turn owe their masters unwa unwavering obedience. So they were big on negotiations, contracts, all those sort of things. Uh, uh, in general, uh, the uh, Church of Asmodeus uh, typically would employ rituals that would like summon demons, or and not demons, but devils. Um, and, uh, you know, would try to charm or coerce or do things of that nature. Typically speaking, uh, one of their followers might raise an army of the dead uh, just because they didn't have any scruples about utilizing necromancy for their ends or means. But uh, typically a follower of Orcus would be the, the uh, demon prince of undeath would be more likely to use the dead at his uh, beck and call. Um, of course, there's other demon and devil princes all throughout the uh, Hells and the Abyss, uh, but um, Asmodeus uh, is the most powerful uh, of uh, the devils uh, and claims to be the first of devils. Uh, you know, he tends to uh, have uh, a portfolio that includes things like, um, you know, arcane magic, deception, uh, legislation, uh, you know, things of that nature. Uh, it, it worked for a time, uh, probably back uh, with the society role, it worked back for a time with the Sunkissed Isles because uh, a lot of the people here believed in the, the fact that might makes right, and that was how their pirate life worked, is, is that if you were strong enough to take it, you took it. Um, whether you did it through deception or other means and such. Despite the fact that most pirates... Um, would seem to be very chaotic as a lot. Um, Asmodeus appealed because the pirates had uh, some sort of honorary code amongst each other. 
um, that uh, they sort of adhered to, but just like Asmodeus, they would, you know, break the code if it would serve their means and they could get away with it. Um, but in order to uh, subsist amongst each other, they did need some sort of law amongst pirates, so to speak. And so uh, many individuals worshipped Asmodeus, including uh, with that society role, um, prominent members of the Rodrigo family, uh, back before they bent the knee to the Kingsland, uh, would be open followers of Asmodeus. Um, but uh, that said, uh, the Kingsland has tried to stamp out uh, worship of you know, any sort of devils <laughs> all throughout the islands because it's heretical faith. Um, and so, uh, again, it's sort of been another contention that like every once in a while, a cult or a, um, a grouping of followers of uh, Asmodeus, what, what the uh, Sunkist Isles uh, individuals would consider one of the old gods of their people, um, you know, alongside like Gazra, the god of winds, nature, and, and waters and such, and other, uh, you know, like the sea bitch um, as well. Uh, all, all of those different gods were ones that they all followed. But um, Asmodeus was one of the most prominent because that helped them establish some semblance of law and order in the Isles. doesn't really care. This is a, a gratuitous event that we are taking as such a task. Trudd. Oh, I'm going to be definitely taking notes the entire time. As Kane's heading out, he just wants to uh, stop and acknowledge Luis real quick. Uh, friend Luis, thank you. Uh, I owe you a drink next time. Oh, you, you are welcome, and yes, um, well, stop stop by uh, after work at some point. Usually I'm working until about sundown, but uh, uh, you can uh, catch me uh, at the uh, the inn next door, absolutely. I'd be happy to uh, catch up with you again, friend. Very good, sir. And uh, with that, uh, where are you guys headed? I'll bring us back to uh, the uh, map, so to speak. And uh, it's only um, a number of miles out uh, outside of town, so it's not too far of a travel. Uh, you would be getting there, uh, you know, within a couple hours, depending on how, you know, if, if you procured horses, it might be faster, of course, but um, it would be uh, out uh, the uh, Silver Gate and to the northeast uh, towards the mountains. Uh, is uh, the uh, where the, the maps uh, say that the uh, the monastery is. Um, and speaking of monasteries, um, one of the you guys go about to go hobnobbing about, um, and you go through maybe the marketplace and such, uh, and a curious sight uh, you all come across uh, is a number of individuals in. Um, in tan and white clothing, uh, the tan is like belts and other adornments on on the uh, almost pristinely kept white robes of what look like uh, monks uh, just moving uh, about the uh, the marketplace, um, mostly as a group, but sometimes splitting up. Uh, and you can see that uh, one of the monks uh, seems to be speaking for the rest. Uh, that monk, instead of having like a tan sash and a tan adornments, has red adornments to them. Uh, and he has what looks to be a uh, golden holy symbol bearing the, uh, looking looks like a holy symbol of the sun. I mean, there's a lot of sun gods, so. Um, but uh, you run into that as you're going about your hobnobbing. That's the only thing that's unusual outside of the normal hustle and bustle of like the marketplace in Old Town. my uh, social skills to see if I pick up on any or society skills to see if I pick up on anything useful with all that. Uh, yeah. You're not really well versed in uh, religious figures and they look like monks. 
Um, uh, so you're not so sure of how they'd fit in with regards to the Sunkissed Isles. They don't seem to be, um, I mean, it is Port of Del Sol, it's the Port of the Sun, so um, worshipping a sun deity probably is not out of the ordinary, but that you don't necessarily recognize that holy symbol. Sure. Uh, I just uh, shot you um, be a whisper uh, what you recognize with regards to the symbol and if you have any questions go ahead and you can whisper back uh, it's just slash whisper or slash WGM and that will get me but um, the um, you you know quite a bit about that deity but that that's the basics Um, I actually, I took uh, a lot of the artwork I just Google for, so I don't actually know who that the token is, is overall. I just, especially the Rodrigo family, I picked up the pictures so long ago because the first thing I wrote was the R Rodrigo family tree. As you uh, go about, you can uh, again. It it seems uh, like the um, the monks. Even when they're interacting with anyone in the marketplace, uh, most of them are not speaking. They're just sort of pointing at things and, um, you know, pantomiming for the most part. But uh, that aside, uh, you guys go about uh, asking around to see if uh, there's any information or something like that. Yeah, um, I mean, you gave us the, the hot dog of what's going on with the rule for hot dog as well. Sure, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, you're asking around the marketplace. Ah, uh, yes, I'm familiar with dubious knowledge. I just wanted to make sure that you know about it so that uh, I do fail that you can make like this for your hobby. Is it a wood creature? Let me check. It should be. Yeah, it should be a creature. I think it's just the hobby just gets the information faster. It's the same. It's diplomacy for gather information. Yep, diplomacy to ask around, um, see if there's anyone that knows anything. All right, um, here. Um, Basically, trying to get um, more information about um, 
Mystics Monastery and you know how some of the rumors and legends and things that it may or may not be contrary if we're headed that way. I'll just type it to you really quick. Major ones, I think, unless I crash down the place and get one of the guys that I'm still typing a little bit to you as well. Okay. Um, okay. It seems like this monastery uh, used to be a pretty central. What do you mean? Well, um, it would be where the people that were interested in uh, debauchery and what would go to refocus their um, their faith. Oh, you know, like you might go to the library to feel more at peace. Oh no, I don't know. I, I, I got what you're going for. The library she can use. Okay. So this would be where someone would want to just indulge. That would be yeah. correct. That sounds fun to me. Right. Um, you know, other than it's, you know, the Prince of Devils. So, you know, we not going to be a good time. Bodies here. That's for sure the debauchery. Yeah, Arashi's like really hanging on your words when you're talking about this to change their stuff. Like, it's just kind of crazy. Oh, Bird's just like trading new information. File of five pages. That is for sure. Um, it also seems that, uh, you know, other than some bad feelings echo in the area. That uh, if caravans get too close, um, some of it, and although mostly you know, those caravans that would be associated with the crown. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, evil dark things. <laughs> Yeah, this may be a ruse. It, this may not be a ruse. Yeah, the only one who seems to be, like, seriously bothered by this is the Margrave. Well, as I said, they're not going to be very right. specific. Nobody else seems to have problems. So maybe it's just somebody that doesn't really like the status quo. Well, it also explains why they're having problems finding someone who wants to be a short tenure cadre of the Margrave around here. Not you. So we, we sounds like we have prepared. to prepare for both. For both, you know what I mean. Right. Well, um, does anybody need to get any supplies? Supplies. Before we head out. Got my pack and torch. I have everything I need. <laughs> Can't grab oh, this. Can't, yeah. Can't grab this. I've got everything I need. 
my travel light as well. Batman won my shopping for no need. Chase on the list because he snorted his pack. And if I do a mom, didn't you grab biscuits earlier? Good or not? Oh, yeah. Takes a lot. He has like seven of them. Oh, I'm good now, thanks. All right, so you guys are headed out uh, to go to the uh, the ruined monastery of Asmodeus. Um, the uh, gate that you'd be leaving uh, Old Town through is the Silver Gate. And again, you're going to be going uh, lightly towards the northeast, uh, further into the island, up towards the uh, mountains a bit. Um, the uh, passes uh, through here lead into the other uh, villages or other uh, towns within the center of the island. Um, works is uh, it's called the uh, the Silver Gate because uh, it's where a majority of the uh, merchants and the trade uh, go out uh, to get further into uh, the uh, the island. Um, and you can see that most of the merchants coming and going through the gate are checked uh, with some guards uh, that uh, appear to be um, associated with the Rodrigo family. Uh, and uh, they are to pay whatever taxes are owed uh, the uh, Lord Rodrigo um, as they, they pass through and bring their goods into uh, Old Town, into Porta del Sol. So uh, that's how you, your mercenaries you are just passing through. So, no, you know, they just briefly wave you on through the gate as you pass out. Um, and uh, the path is uh, pretty well kept. Uh, it's dirt with some stone to it uh, to, uh, to keep it from getting too uh, muddied uh, in the event that, uh, you know, there's a heavy rain season uh, to the, the area. Um, the roads built up a little bit on the sides with fur further stone uh, to sort of uh, keep it a little bit higher than some of the uh, the areas and trenches that it goes through or past. Um, and you can see that there's an extensive amount of farmland out here uh, of various different uh, types of crops uh, that they uh, grow in these areas and some groves of trees in addition to you know, uh, wheat or other types of, uh, or sugar cane or things of that nature that they sort of are growing in the fields. Um, but, um, you know, y you can see that there are uh, a pretty good amount of traffic to and from on this road. Uh, and so you're, you're not too terribly concerned about safety as there appears to be, you know, other merchants headed out this way. Um, and uh, it's still daylight. At least you have a uh, three to four more hours. Um, it'll probably be dark by the time you're getting towards the monastery. Um, but uh, by that point in time, you'll be get, getting off of the main road, off into a sort of a side road that the uh, leads up into um, the uh, mountainous uh, side of uh, the, uh, the road just uh, to lead up and wind uh, to this uh, monastery that sort of sits and over, oversees the, uh, the trade route coming out of the Silver Gate. Uh, did you notice a lot of trading ca caravans coming out of the Silver Gate? Yes, you did. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it might not be in our best interest to wait for a Margrave uh, trading caravan and just kind of walk along with them since they've been the ones that have been getting attacked. Uh, if you'd like to, um, that'd be more of a matter of either luck or uh, checking in at, at see what um, merchants uh, are uh, associated either with the Margrave or with the Kingsland. Um, so, uh, you can see that m most of the, uh, merchants that are moving are, uh, Castellanos, uh, of sorts. Um, the majority of them are coming towards Porto del Sol, but there's a good number going out of it. Uh, you don't see specifically with you at the time that you leave, uh, many merchants that, or, you know, patrols or men that are associated with the Margrave. We're off on a secret mission. But uh, if you'd like to wait for one of them, um, 
Okay. So uh, let's. So as you guys are, are going uh, further in, and you can see uh, that there are um, signs in uh, Castellanos uh, and, uh, you know, other uh, sort of inclinations that as the, the road peels off and the, the road that goes along the trade route is very well kept and maintained. Um, and you can see here and there, uh, Mateo Rodrigo's men, you know, ride up and down it. Uh, but uh, it goes off into the mountain and the, the road uh, has, the, the signs are in Castellanos, none of you speak it, but you get the sensation that uh, from like some of the like X's on them and such that they would ward off a traveler from going up into the, uh, the mountain pass towards the monastery. Uh, that aside, though, um, you, the the road's crumbling. Uh, it is almost pure stone, uh, and it looks like uh, you know as it goes up into landings of areas where the the stone goes crops off, and there may be some grass and like some trees uh, and other things. There is uh, a uh, source of a sort of water that comes down uh, and it doesn't necessarily cross over into uh, the trader's route but it uh, sort of feeds into a, a lake that is at the basin here and there's se at several levels throughout this road going up it looks like the water pulls out from uh, coming down the mountain into various different uh, lakes and tributaries that are alongside of the route but only to the the north and northwest of it um, that said, uh, as you guys are exploring it, you get off the beaten path, and no one else is getting off the beaten path, by the way. Uh, uh, what uh, exploration actions uh, would each of you be taking? And this is something that's specific in Pathfinder. Um, you can, of course, be taking actions with skills, but there are exploration activities which are detailed under f uh, page 496 in the rulebook. I'll sort of go through them now uh, as, for, as far as uh, options uh, go, uh, but things such as, and, and these can be applied with various different skills, but you can try to avoid notice, uh, and this is individually each of you can take an action like this. Uh, you can defend, which is like keeping up your shield and uh, being wary of being attacked. Uh, you can detect magic, which means that uh, every so often you're pulsing a detect magic spell uh, to see if there's a presence of magic within uh, however many feet of you. Uh, there's follow the expert, which if someone's an expert in a skill and like tracking or something along those lines, you can try to aid them. Uh, you can hustle, which is trying to move quickly up into the monastery. Uh, you can investigate, which is investigating the area as you're going. Uh, repeat a spell, which is you're just casting a spell over and over again, like maybe guidance or something like that. Like if you wanted to constantly guide someone's uh, you know, tracking or uh, perception. Um, there is a uh, scouting, which uh, provides uh, the capability to uh, add to initiative in the event that you get into combat. You're keeping a worried eye out, maybe stealthing ahead or something like that. Um, and uh, there is the search option, which, uh, you know, so you, you can notice the presence or absence of something unusual in the area by constantly searching about. Um, you know, just because you're uh, doing one of the action, other actions doesn't mean that you're not keeping an eye out, but you don't get to actively roll a check. Usually uh, anything that would be hidden would be looking against your passive perception, which your passive perception is 10 plus your perception skill. So if something isn't hiding particularly well, you might still see it, but uh, you needed to be using uh, something like uh, investigator search in order to actively be rolling perception checks while you're moving. Certainly doesn't suck. <laughs> Maybe stealth. 
Well, I could, uh, I could uh, try to cover our tracks and use my stealth to, uh, you know, I'm trying to avoid notice. Oh, you're trying to avoid notice, you said? Avoid uh, notice. Avoid notice. Avoid notice. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll allow that to uh, work. Sure. Uh, avoid notice would typically be trying to uh, move forward quietly, but avoiding notice, I'd allow that to work in retrospect, covering your tracks. Certainly. So that would stealth would would be an applicable skill in that respect. And there we go. All right. So. Uh, that said, uh, as as you rolled it, that's f fine right now. But uh, typically, I will have you roll your skills uh, when they come into effect. And the reason for that is is that, for example, now with that stealth skill roll, you know that you have a, a good roll. Whereas if we have you roll it when it matters, you don't know up until when it matters if you had a good stealth score. <laughs> so, um, but that said, avoid. Uh, so, uh, Grail, is, are you detecting magic, you said? Okay. Um, that leaves uh, Ko and Sayer. Scouting as well. Cool. I don't know if double scouting stacks, by the way. I don't think it does. So. Uh, th there's like a whole laundry list on page 496, but let me see. Scouting, exploration. Um, there was the nuzzle my nuts option. Let's see. Yes. Uh, so scouting is you scout ahead and behind the group to watch for danger moving at half speed at the start of the next encounter every creature in your party gains a plus one circumstance bonus to initiative so it won't it won't necessarily be able to stack i would say i would say if the if the two of you did it then you wouldn't be doing it at half speed then uh if that works um so cool so you two are scouting and that just leaves sayer Got it. Let me put that down for everybody so that I keep that on my thing. Uh, so, uh, you guys are traveling up the, the trail, and it seems like that there was the ruins of defensible buildings here and there uh, as it was going up. Like, the ru you can see the ruins of... Uh, various and most of it's marked on your map, by the way. But the ruins, of various different towers, uh, various gatehouses. I mean, this this trail uh, has rock on you know both sides at certain points, so it it looks like it was probably very defensible at one point. Um, but uh, any of the the buildings that were built have been reduced to uh, rubble over the uh, the decades. Um, but uh, you guys can see as you you're passing sort of a, a ruined tower um i can have uh virgil and sayer roll either uh perception or uh 
whatever other applicable ability you might have uh, regarding, uh, you know, survival or any of those sorts of things to see uh, if you notice uh, anything about the terrain or your surroundings as you're sort of moving forward. And so Ko and, and Kane are scouting uh, back and forth for you guys. Um, you guys are moving up uh, in uh, twilight uh, as as you begin to move forward, and uh, you are approaching uh, what looks to be the ruins of some sort of barracks, gatehouse, or other defensible structure that is directly in the middle of the road that would lead up uh, into the uh, the mountains. Again, it is ruined and mostly half walls, although there's uh, portions of some of the stone walls. Uh, still uh, remaining strong, um, but uh, with uh, both of you, I'm going to whisper you both uh, separately some things. Um, That's roughly what you. Sorry. That's roughly what you guys uh, see as you're sort of looking about and such. Um, and uh, Arashi, if you could give me uh, a, another stealth check, just so that we know uh, what uh, you've been doing to uh, to cover your uh, trail. All right. So uh, the perceptions are what you guys get. Um, w as far as the scouting goes. Um, you guys have watched your, your flanks pretty closely and, uh, you know, no one's uh, jumped you as of yet. Um, but, uh, you know, you're going to have to move through this uh, barracks-like structure in order to continue along the road. Um, and uh, you you have your, your folks on guard uh, that, um, you know, you're ready to call out at a moment's notice if you notice anything unusual. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, place you guys on the map um we may get to combat tonight we may just have to call it once we roll initiative because it'll go a little bit past but that said i do yeah i, I, I know it, it's weird given all the inclination Yes, I was going to say, it, it the uh, twilight is going to darkness as you guys are approaching this structure, by the way. So you guys will need some light sources. It hasn't changed over. I whispered them something. I'm I'm setting up the uh, the map as we're speaking only because. That being said, I I do need to know uh, what the light source situation is because I think it's only Kane and uh, Virgil that don't have dark vision. 
shall be called by my own sins. I do not have that power. I do not have that power. I cast shadow over burning fire. Well, I can take shadow. So the, the, the light is on Virgil then? And it's cast 24 or 20 feet, then 40 feet uh, low, I think, or something like that? Uh, casting bright light in 20 foot radius like a torch. Yep. And then. And all right, let me just make sure that I've got that right. So you don't have uh, light on cane, uh, nor low light. Uh, let me just make sure that you still have vision. And let me, no problem just adjusting the map since it's nighttime. Let me make sure that if, yeah, that's dark vision on that token, so I need to adjust that, your vision. might have put light on another source then so let me double check here to make sure night vision there Uh, so, uh, Arashi has low light or dark vision? No. Oh, so you, that's right. You have limited uh, vision as well. That makes sense, because I was going to say, I think I found the light source that, uh, yep, you guys are relying on Virgil, and I'm just making sure that you can only see what, and you can only see what Virgil has around him. But... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I kind of built the character that way. Okay, that works. Alrighty. So, uh, that said, I'm gonna have you guys at the edge of the map here. And uh, those of you that don't have dark vision, uh, are going to only be able to see what uh, Virgil has as far as light goes. Um, but that being so, oh, and let me move a Gabriel, to Gabriel token over there so that I can actually see with the camera. So let's see here. Gabriel, 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 where did I put him? There you are. It's back to the, the ruins. And it's not completely unrelated. Do you happen to have black face paint you have left over? Uh, like, uh, you know, like a streaky black thing or whatever it is, or? I'm, I'm thinking of doing like a whole skull look for next time. I've, I've got some in the closet, I think, left over from the clown stuff and everything of that sort, but a lot of it's probably dried up at this juncture. I'd have to check it to make sure. I'll talk to you about the vampire game after, because I was going to talk to you about a few things for Saturday, anywho. But um, 
Uh, that said, uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, you guys should be able to see, and some of you see pretty far because you see in you know darkness as if it was daylight, more or less. But some of you only see a little bit. Um, there is uh, one of those uh, lake-like uh, water features right by this uh, this uh, gatehouse that is uh, to the north of you all, uh, and it comes up almost directly to the ruins, uh, so to speak. Um, some of you can probably see uh, the uh, ruins from where you're standing, I think, but um, or at least the very edge of the ruins. Uh, that said, some of you, as uh, darkness begins to fall, you can only see that the edges and, and the shapes of it out to the uh, the north there. Um, the uh, daylight sort of leaves you, and you're uh, forced to rely on Virgil's light. Yeah, it's the best time. Oh, okay. Hi, dude. Yeah. You were saying you're watching? No, I was just saying, it's never a good time. <laughs> Sorry, I'm no having like trouble focusing in. Some good information on it. Well, it's your weapons. It's going to uh, the fighting. the uh, structure is off to the uh, the north. So I'm seeing some zombies and skeletons. Now, I don't see okay. anything else. I don't see anything myself. Uh, more than just your feet. They're uh, they're inside that. Virgil, yeah. don't stay right behind me. I'll lead us in. Any advice on zombies and skeleton weaknesses? On skeletons, you're going to want to some blunt to smash them with. Unfortunately, I cannot do that at this point with my uh, knowledge of studying zombies. I've not been able to learn how to do much. <laughs> Yeah, usually the turning of the undead in this edition is just using a cure uh, cure wounds at thirty foot radius because that da that heals uh, living folks and damages dead. Well, it's also a turn on dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, Pete, I'm gonna take out and light this hooded lamp as well. Okay. So one moment. Uh, what kind of light does your hooded lantern give you? Black light. Sheds bright light. Oh, one second. So hooded lantern. Hooded lantern. Uh, 30 foot radius and dim light the next 30, so very good. So. Well, our cover is Doctors Without Borders. I mean, really. I, I, pull, out, I pull out my great axe just to hide my dark lord. Yeah. I've got my short sword and uh, what else am I building? I guess my rapier. That's about it. Yeah. I don't have bludgeoning. Yeah, I don't have any bludgeoning weapons either. So I'm just gonna say one we take on the zombies. I uh, yes. pull away my great axe and pull out my maul. Okay. Don't see the oh, zombies. Maul? Where's Paul? Oh, they're there. Uh, once Co gets to that point, and you guys can, the rest of you can move up. Uh, Rashi, you're in the middle of the water, by the way. Unless you want to be swimming. I mean, if you want to be, that's fine. Step in the water. I will stay away from <laughs> Very good. Right through there. Uh, two zombies. Once you guys get to this point, I need everyone to roll initiative uh, with a uh, a plus one. Uh, to their uh, Kane, you can't go any further than the, once you get to that point where they can see you. Uh, that's when initiative is triggered. My initiative. My initiative is a ten. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
In one moment, because I had the old initiative up and I hadn't cleared it yet, so I'm just going to make sure that I get rid of the old ones and not the new ones. So, uh, you, can, you can manipulate the initiative by the one. Cool. Mine's correct. Really? I, I added the one temp, and I'll just take it out. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so then that's uh, Grails at a 14, so that's good. Actually, there is a modifier. I could have just put the one in there. Huh. I tried to change mine to 27. It looked better. <laughs> Alright, Shane. Don't trust your mic. Just double checking. I mean, right to. I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> Virgil. So, how are you getting your initiative to change? Double click on the number in the turn order. On the bottom. Wherever you have the turn order panel, just double click on the number by your name. So, where yours says 8, just double click on the 8. Oh, on the turn over there. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. Uh, once you guys come around the corner, um, uh, and uh, we'll pick this up here uh, next game, I'm going to have you guys uh, have a surprise round on them. So you'll have a round to uh, to act just because they, you know, didn't see or hear you guys coming. Um, and, you, you know, like you guys clearly knew that they were there and they did not know that you were there. Leastwise, they didn't seem to react to your lights or anything like that. And then uh, past the surprise round, um, what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, pick up with my guys rolling initiative after that point and uh, all that sort of fun stuff. So um, Gabriel is not there. He's just using it as a marker. For oh, no, Gabriel came with you all. Uh, yeah, he's, again... Uh, he, he seems to be as part of... But the thing is, is that Gabriel, as he's shown, he uh, it's not by any means a great fighter, nor is he uh, terribly skilled with a lot of different things. So, Absolutely. So, um, But that said, uh, we'll pick up here next week. Uh, that's another 150 XP to everyone for uh, carrying out the negotiations with uh, the... Um, uh, Adlat uh, Lockwin uh, organization and picking up the contract and heading out uh, to the uh, ruined monastery of Asmodeus and uh, we'll have uh, combat uh, next game. So. How much do you like that kid's like? Total, by the way? What's the total we are at, guys? Who, who, somebody who was paying attention. 300. Is that right? Yeah, it was... Well, uh... Yeah. Every, every thousand, right? yep, uh, it's a, th a thousand points for every level. So you can you could keep track of it as like thirteen hundred, and then like level two is two thousand, or you know either way. Yep. Yeah, I think one seventy five was a couple games back, or it w originally it was one seventy five, and I boosted it so that we could get to uh, to level two before we get into anything serious. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, good game, everybody. Sure. It's still just two. I think that the, the asterisk that they have is that in addition to the spells that you gain from leveling up, you always have your font associated. And if your charisma bumps, then your font bumps. So, like, for example, when you guys hit level four, uh, you'll be able to put plus two in a variety of different, uh, you know, abilities. And then you'll pr you, as a cleric, likely want to bump your charisma because that's, a, you know, a basic, uh, you know, you're gaining spells that way. So. Absolutely. Sure, it's level two. Instead of the asterisk, it's level one. 100.